All right, so here's Pip when she's feeling kind of happy. She's got kind of a loose, waggy tail. Yes, good job. Yeah. So again, you see that kind of waggy tail. It's upright, but it's super waggy. Now, when she sees another dog, sometimes you'll see that body language change and you'll see her tail um, stiffen. And it's not loose and waggy like that. So I have a fake dog a little ways up the road here, and I'm just going to show you how that changes and show you what we've been working on. So, by the way, that's where that fake dog is up there, okay? She just saw it. So I'm just going to kind of slowly, hello, slowly head toward it. I'm just going to kind of let her wander and sniff as we get closer. And I want you to watch her body language change. So, good girl. And that's where the dog is up there. That's where she is. Sniffing. Sniffing sometimes is an indication that she's getting nervous, but she's trying. <laughs> Here we go. But she's trying to not be really obvious. Good girl. Okay, so let me show you what we're doing here. So where she started to bark is the place where she's uncomfortable. We call that the threshold. So what I'm doing with her is taking her toward the dog up until that threshold. And then we're once, uh, hopefully I beat the bark next time. I don't really want her to bark. But when I get to the point where she's just a little bit uncomfortable, I'm going to let her hang out there and wait for a little head turn. And then I'm going to go backward again. So she's just sniffing around, which is great. So now we're going to head toward the dog. Dog's up there. So she's sniffing. Again, an indicator, uh, sniffing can be an indicator of a little bit of nervousness, like she's trying to check him out without being super obvious. So there we go. He's pretty close. There, see the stiffness? Mm -hmm. Kind of pulls on the leash. Getting a little bit tense. And I'm going to let her... Yeah, she's giving a little wagginess, which is a little friendly wag. Get a little barking. So she's got some ambivalence. She's like, oh, I kind of want to go close, but I'm kind of nervous. So I'm going to back up just a tiny bit. Yippee. Yippee. There is a place where she can look at that dog and uh, not bark. So if she's barking, good girl. That's at least a very friendly look. This is as close as we've gotten to the dog since I've begun to work with it. Uh, and she's already back in kind of relaxed mode. So we'll come back around. Give a little, see how far close she can come. And I'm just going to wait until that leash gets a little tight and she's telling me she's tense. And there, yep, right about there. You see where the leash gets tense and she gets into this forward stance. That's where she's a little nervous. And that's where the barking starts. So I'm going to take her back again. Come on, girl. See if I can get a little closer before the barking because the once the barking happens there's just not much you can do at that point but you don't have very much room so here she's relaxed and then she goes from relaxed up into the bark in no space at all so I'm just gonna let her kind of sniff around and let her head toward the dog if she wants to go I don't want to drag her in other words good girl Good girl. So even though she's just sniffing around in the leaves, there's nothing she's doing except thinking about this over here. Dogs are very super casual. She's trying to be really casual, really easy. Hi, sweetie. Yeah. Little neighbor girl. So we're walking up and I'm gonna just kind of hang out here. Good, that was kind of half-hearted. It's kind of a half-hearted bark. Maybe a little too close, so we'll let her come down here. She's thinking about the little girl across the street that's going in the house. All right. Want to try again? Good girl. Just sniffing. Big dog's over here. Good girl. Kind of relax. Easy going. But again, she's been really casual, but probably all she's thinking about is the dog. 
Feeling a little brave, gonna head toward the dog. Body carriage is the same, it's not really changing, which I'm happy to see. She's not looking really tense, even though the dog is right there. Good job, nice work, Missy. Good job, very nice. And she sniffs the butt, which is a lovely greeting. She didn't go straight for the face. Very, she says, oh, I know, there's something funny about that dog. Yeah, there's something funny about that dog. You're doing good. Good girl. Yeah, and so now that she's barking, I'm going to take her back. Come on, girl. Come on, girl. Just going to let her kind of hang around. And she immediately goes back into relaxed mode. So we'll go back in a little bit. Good girl. I'm going to let her sniff around again, then I'll turn back on when she hits toward the dog. All right, now we're heading back to the dog. And she's going straight for him, looking pretty relaxed. No big deal. Nice! She goes straight for the butt, which is lovely. Good girl! Now, see this body? <laughs> Tense tail, tense muscular tension. And you kind of see this back and forth, this weight that is sometimes forward and then sometimes bounces back far away. So where I'm working with her is just to kind of, you know, share space with this dog. And just come to relax. And lots and lots of exposure to a lot of different dogs. But the body language is really the key. So the things that I'm starting to do is when I see any of that tension with oncoming dogs, which doesn't, it's not always that way. She's actually come a long way. But when I'm still seeing that tension, I start to back her up just a little bit and then I feed, feed, feed her like crazy. Good girl. All right, she's just kind of moseying over. He's really close. Kind of mosey on over. Very nice. Good girl. Very nice. Good job. Very good. Very good, you're being so brave. Good job, Pippi. Good job, Pippi. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. Good girl. Very nice. So we were just having her, I'm just having her practice a lot. With a lot of different dogs, a lot of different people. Uh, more and more exposure is really all we can do at this point. And lots of happy talk when she's brave and makes that choice to head on in. But the main thing is when you see that tension, don't rush her and don't push her into moving forward. When you see that tension, you see that little bit of nervousness and the uh, her tail get real stiff and the muscular tension, just kind of wait if you can, if you've got the room. Just wait, let her think it through. This dog caused her to bark way back there. And over time, she's gotten to where she's just moseying around right near the dog. So we just need to have a little bit of patience, a little bit of uh, practice of approaching a lot of different dogs and uh, slowing down when she's starting to get tense. All right. So she is worried about somebody coming out of a car across the street. So when there's somebody crossing that's making her nervous or what have you, hello, if she starts to focus on someone, yes, I literally take a handful of treats and I just put it in front of her face. Yes. So we just had a dog pass a little bit ago and when the dog was passing by where she's starting to bark, I literally just cram food in her mouth. Yeah, good girl. Good girl. Uh, let's see. Wait, there you go. A little worried about something over there. No big deal. The tail is 
little bit questioning, but not that bad. But if she was to start to bark or in any way get super uptight, I would just literally put the food in her mouth. Yes. Let us cram it in there if she's worried. Yes, good girl. Good. Come here, boo. Should we get more snacks? Good girl. Yeah, good. The dog pass. And we're just sitting here in front of the house. And she was very worried. And she still has that kind of worried expression. Now she's concentrating on someone else across the street. So when she's worried and she has that bark, I literally take food. I literally take food and cram it right in her mouth. There you go. You go. You go, girl. It's hard to see, I know, but I'm literally got food right in front of her mouth. Yeah. Oh, hello. Yeah. Oh, hello. So she's looking and she's eating and she's looking and she's eating. But I'm literally just feeding her right now when she's watching. Because over time, she'll start to connect food with the things that she's worried about. And just like how, you know, when people are upset, I mean, sometimes girls will eat like a pint of ice cream or something. And that's because there is a calming influence to food. And so when you have something scary, like she's all tense about a dog, you know, whatever that is across the street, then I'm going to feed her. And it makes her feel great. She's worried now about a car. There's a car that just stopped there. And she's like, oh my gosh, what's going on? But I just crammed that food in front of her mouth. And uh, she gets convinced that everything's okay. Good job. Good job, girl. So we're just sitting here with our friend the fake dog just watching as things go by and eating and watching and eating and watching all good practice for her all right so we've got the dog over here today now we've got Pip and you see she's got her tail upright she's very stiff she's worried and she chose instead to look away so I'm happy with that so we're just gonna sniff she you can see now she's putting her head down on the ground sniffing which is a way for her to kind of gauge the dog up there without being super obvious so sniffing is usually the first area where the threshold is of her concern she's doing great good girl so she's choosing to just sniff around and not make a big deal about the dog which I love so when we start heading that way though, I'm gonna feed her. And if she if she chooses to look at the dog, then yes, I'm gonna feed her like crazy. So we'll head this way. Yes. So the dog again is that direction. We're gonna kind of head that way. Yeah, good girl. Very nice. Happy body posture. Oh, she's just going right up next to her. Very good. Good job. See, I seen that doggy before. Good work. So you can see a little bit of practice and kind of getting to kind of getting a routine down, which is to be able to look at something and eat food and uh, take some time. And then quickly she just kind of works it out. And the more experience she has where she's eating from a comfortable position away from the dog and being able to just watch and kind of connect eating and uh, feeling good around a dog, then um, around a strange dog, it'll start to get better. But it's a little bit of a slow go. So when you start walking, definitely you're gonna wanna um, take food with you and feed her at every opportunity. So for example, now the dog is way over there. So as we're going over there, Pippi, come here girl. Pippi, yes. So as we're heading over there, um, as soon as something, yes, is even vaguely identifiable as a dog, I start walking and feeding. And I'm just literally shotgunning treats as we're walking. Good girl. Good girl. Happy. Yeah. So now, dog's there. Eating. Happy. Oh, now she's fine to just cruise on by. Because she's eaten so many times and she's kind of put that whole issue with the dog aside. 
but it's just going to take practice. Lots of food, lots of practice. And as soon as you see something that looks vaguely like a dog, I would just start feeding, feeding, feeding her as you get closer and closer.